morning, church. Glad to see you here today and uh, glad to know that people are watching us online as well today. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad and rejoice in it. So we're going to start off this morning with This Is Amazing Grace. Why don't you stand with me, please, as we sing This Is Amazing Grace. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You laid down your life that I would be set free. Oh, oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory, who rose the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you laid down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you laid down your life that I would be set free oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Amen. Amen. We want to sing a new song to him. Amen. Amen. So we're going to sing Cornerstone now. Cornerstone. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, 
but holy trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love through seeks to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. When he shall come, with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. Christ alone. I said, I'm thankful for what God has done, and I'm blessed. Amen? How about you? Amen. Now you can hear me a little bit better. All right. So, uh, a lot of things to be thankful for, a lot of things God has done for us. Uh, we are thankful. I'm wearing a special shirt today. This is a very important verse. We are created to be in His workmanship to do good things. That's my take on the verse, all right? But we are God's masterpiece. We're a living masterpiece. This is our theme for Vacation Bible School. And hey, look, it just happens to fit into our last message today that we're going to hear in a few minutes about what God wants us to do with our lives. But we had a great training a week ago Saturday here at the church. We had about 40 people here from all kinds of different churches. And I appreciate Isabel and Juana and Joanna helping with the food and the other workers, Dave and Liz, or Liz two weeks ago, but Liz this uh, Liz two weeks ago, Dave and Liz two, okay, got it right now. <laughs> Carl and Calypso, Ramon and Elizabeth, Darcy, Katie, just everybody that helped, it went really well. Uh, we did a training in Escondido yesterday, we had about 40 people again, and uh, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. I saw a lot of people that I haven't seen in a couple of years because of COVID-related things, uh, but we're all excited about Vacation Bible School. And we talked about why we do Vacation Bible School. And I showed some pictures of Vacation Bible School with my brother, who's just a few years younger than me when he was just a little boy, about two or three years of age. And uh, I said, look, 
And now both he and I are pastors, and Vacation Bible School was a big part of that. People, kids can find out about Jesus Christ and then grow in that, and we connect with families. We are wanting our kids to grow in the Lord, amen? But we want them, and so it's coming up. It's about a month away. And I had something in the bulletin about it, but I had to remove it because I had the wrong dates. Somebody said, Pastor, you need a, somebody to help you out. Yes, I do. But uh, uh, they're coming up. We will start the week after 4th of July on the 7th and 8th. It'll be at night, Thursday, Friday, then Saturday, and then it ends on Sunday. And know this, our service times will change that Sunday. COVID restrictions allowing. Now, we know that things are happening. We're going to pray real hard today. The numbers will go back down. All right? But COVID restrictions aside, we will have a combined service at not 11 o'clock, but at 10 o'clock with the Spanish church. And we have a preacher that's going to come and preach in both languages. And uh, the kids will have a vacation Bible school. So a lot of stuff happening in June and July. And we'll talk about it a little bit more when we do the announcements at the end. But that's why I'm wearing this shirt today. I appreciate Carl putting these together. And uh, we wore them for the training sessions. And I said, you know what? It fits. Talking about VBS and everything else. So I'm appreciative and thankful for Vacation Bible School. All right? Other thank yous and thank the Lords. Damien had a clear CT scan. And uh, Donna is doing better. She said she's not in a lot of pain. Uh, we do have a graduate from our church, uh, Raymond Cruz, Virginia's middle child, Raymond, who was, uh, came here a long time ago, just a little boy, and he's graduated from Chula Vista High School, and uh, I'm not sure what his plans are, but uh, that's always a blessing, I know, to have a graduate. He, honor roll, uh, football MVP, had uh, several awards, so... Uh, I know she's rejoicing in that. And uh, David passed the test he had to take back there, so we're glad for that. Who else has an answer to prayer or a praise the Lord today? Something you'd like to share with us? Uh, Dwight. Tina and I are unspoken God, Amen. God and Amen. Amen. Unspoken request. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, for the grace of God, my symptoms were really, really mild. Amen. 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 Well, glad to see you back again today. All right. I'm glad that your husband didn't get it either, right? All right. Yes, sir. I want to thank God for um, allowing me to not plunge too deep into the desert, kind of straight away. Amen. And, uh, Seeing you here today is an answer to prayer. Amen. And we'll keep you in prayer, brother. We'll keep you in prayer. All right. His name is on the spiritual side. If you don't know, this is Dwight's brother, Darren. So we're glad that you both are here today. So, all right. Other answers to prayer? Uh, I want to say to my wife, this is about the COVID. Um, I separated, you know, in a different room with her for a while. I'm not sure I had COVID. But uh, God, I left it in God. And with all of the shots we've gotten, we still got it. So, Amen. 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 Absolutely. Amen. 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 Thank you for that. All right. So great testimonies, answers to prayer, God doing great things with Dwight and Tina and for Darren and for Rosa and Sylvester. Got the names right, right? Okay, amen. All right, I want to make sure I get the right names there. I don't want to call you guys by the wrong names. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. We'll definitely pray for her family, for sure. But we're glad that you're safe. 
Amen. 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 All right. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. That's right. We talked about that last week for traveling mercies for Suzette and Sus- Susanna. Leaving on Friday. All right. Okay. Definitely pray for her. All right. Yes, David. Wow. We won't ask if she takes after her mother or after her father. <laughs> we don't want to start a family conflict. All right. All right, that's awesome. Sophia finishing well. I'm, it's great to see uh, John and Pauline as girls growing up. I, how long have you guys been married? I remember I did your wedding, and so it's so great to see your family grow and everything. That's great. So uh, just to see the kids growing up, moving on to the next year of school, it's always a blessing. All right, uh, let's talk about prayer requests today. Um, Ida called me, and she had let Darcy and Ruth know. That's the lady that would sit back here in the wheelchair that had cancer in her mouth. And uh, she let me know that she was going to a VA hospital Uh, She said Riverside. I don't know if she was confused because she also said Highway 1 and the ocean. Now, I don't know of any Riverside near the ocean and a VA hospital, but it's an answer to prayer because she's moved there to get treatment for the cancer in her mouth. So she's going to have radiation and have other things happening. So that's an answer to prayer, but we don't want to forget her. Uh, I'm going to try to do some research and talk to some people and see if they know where she's at. But we are thankful that she is doing this. But pray for Ida. Uh, She has now moved out of the area. So we won't be bringing her, as far as I know, anymore to church. So pray for her. Uh, Pray also um, for Teresa, who used to come. She lives at the uh, Congregational Towers. She fell and broke her wrist and her hip. We need to pray for her. And continue to pray. Any news on the pastor's wife in Los Mochis? Um, she's doing better. Amen. Amen. They're praising that because today they are 40, uh, celebrating their 40-year anniversary. Amen. Amen. All right. And I talked to Trish this week. Wayne is doing better. He's able to get up and down the steps at their place and get out a little bit. So with the COVID and everything else that hit him, pneumonia, uh, we're thankful that he's doing better. All right, but continue to pray for him. There's others with cancer for Jeremy and Ziggy and his wife and for Sharon and for Diane and for Bob, Isabel's husband. God can be with these that have cancer as well. Any other requests? Any other health requests? Continue to pray for what's happening in our nation with the shootings, not just Uvalde, but also Philadelphia, and other places recently, we need to pray about this whole thing. And we need to pray that uh, our leadership will know what to do, the right thing to do, for wisdom, for the hand of God. The king's heart is in the hand of God, a verse tells us. And so God can turn it whichever way he chooses. And so we need to pray about that situation. All right? Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Thank you for answered prayer. Thank you for all of these that were mentioned today, for Dwight and Tina, for Darren. uh, Lord, uh, then you've been with Dave and you've been with Donna and for Raymond's graduation and for good grades and these that are moving ahead this next year in school. We're thankful for these. Uh, We do pray for Susanna and Suzette as they travel. Uh, and for uh, Vanessa, that you might be with her health ish today. We pray for unspoken requests that are still there, for Kelly and for Sandy, as well as the other ones mentioned. We pray for Joanna, as she's waiting on surgery, and for Teresa, and for Wayne, and for those with cancer. Uh, we pray for those that have been diagnosed with COVID recently, co-workers of, uh, of uh, Virgil's, uh, that you might be with her family, as well as others, as the numbers go up. Lord, we pray for two things. We pray that 
um, as people perhaps are diagnosed with COVID, that you'll keep them safe and they won't be at death's door, but you'll bring them through it like you did with Rosa, uh, Lord, and with others. We're thankful for those health things, but we're praying because it's still a very real thing in our community. And we pray that, Lord, the numbers will not continue to go up, but they'll go down so that we can continue to minister in our community and to do great things in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we pray for what's happening in our world with the shootings and schools and late nights and at doctor's offices and just it seems crazy and out of control. Lord, we pray for two things. We pray for men and women's hearts, that they'll be in the right place. And we pray, Lord, for protection, that our leaders can make the right decisions concerning weaponry and guns and other things. Uh, Lord, that you'll give them wisdom and you'll give them direction. Uh, we pray for spiritual needs that you might continue to work. We want to see people coming to Christ. We pray for Vacation Bible School, that uh, boys and girls can come to know Jesus Christ through that and grow more in their Christian faith. Uh, but we pray for our loved ones, family members, friends, neighbors that need Jesus Christ. We pray that we can tell them the good news about Jesus Christ and their lives will be changed. We are thankful for all that you've blessed us with. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, girls and girls, looks like, are going to class. Katie, are you going to grab those two? All right. All right. You're dismissed. Just girls today. Wow. We'll send the other ones over too. All right. So today we're going to continue talking about created with a purpose. Created with a purpose. God has uniquely made each one of us. No matter who we are, no matter what our mental capacity is, no what our physical limitations are, God has created us in His image. God has created us with a purpose. God has created us to do something. If you don't know Jesus Christ, if you've never trusted Him into your heart and life, know this. You are created in the image of God. God is creative. God is loving. God is caring. God does deal with justice, yes. But God does many things, and He has given us those things so we can find people that don't know Jesus Christ, but that are creative. Uh, you know how many different songs are put together with lyrics and music and by artists every week across America and around the world? I love all kinds of musical genres. I like, I like bluegrass. We didn't know that about you, Pastor. I like bluegrass. I like 50s love songs. I, I, like, uh, I like a little bit of rap. I like a little bit of hip-hop, okay? I like all kinds. I like, I don't know that I can say I like Screamo for David over here. If you know what that is, then you know what that is. But uh, I at least want to be able to hear what the lyrics are saying, not just something being... But anyway... But artists, and then they're painting, taking pictures, creating digital things all the time. God has created us, and he loves us. Now, that's, uh, that's outside of if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ. I 100% have looked in the scriptures and believed this totally, that if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you've accepted him into your life, that God has a deeper purpose for you. He wants you to be creative. He wants you to be loving and to be caring. He wants you to do all those things, but God may have something a little deeper for you. So as we've gone through these series, we've seen how we're... Uh, uh, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We're created in Jesus for good works, from Ephesians 2.10. Um, we we've seen the shapes of Moses and Peter, spiritual gifts, your heart, you know, what your passion is about, your abilities, your personality, your experiences. And today, what I want to talk about is from 1 Peter chapter 2, and it's you called to do Good works. You are called. Pastor, we give you 
the big buck salary for you to take care of all the good works in our community. Well, there's a couple of mistakes with that. One, it's not a big buck salary. And two, it's not my job to do as a minister to do all the good works. Did you know that you are all called to be ministers as a believer in Jesus Christ? Well, pastor, if that's so, then why am I not up here talking about Jesus? Well, if you feel called and led to do that, let's go. Let's go, okay? Let's have somebody come up here and preach. Somebody come up here and open the Word. Let's do that. But we are all called to be a minister in some area. And who knows what it might be. It might be helping a homeless person. Or it might be uh, fostering kids. It might be helping families that foster children. There's a lot of grandparents raising their grandkids. And those grandparents need help taking care. Uh, getting provided for. And maybe just giving a night away on the town. To where they can go and have dinner somewhere. And somebody take care of their grandchildren for them. There's a lot of ways to minister. And, and we could spend the rest of our time today, half an hour, just talking about all the myriad things. But we want to see what First Peter has to say about how I'm called to do good works. Now as a pastor, there's certain things that I need to do. May or not, may or not agree. May or may not agree. Uh, I am to care for the flock that God has given me. I'm to make sure you're in the right place spiritually. And if you call me and say, hey, can you come to the hospital? I come to the hospital. If you say, can you come to my home? We want to talk. Or if you say, we're having problems in a relationship. Can we talk? I'm called to do that. That's part of my job. But I also minister in other ways. I minister at the local high school. I do things there as a volunteer. I was on campus just a couple of weeks ago helping in the drama department. I, I minister apart from that. I might see somebody that needs help. I, I, <laughs> Darcy was in the 99 cent store doing some shopping for the vacation Bible school craft stuff, and she's in there shopping, and I'm coming back to the store, and I, sometimes I go into Dollar Tree just to see what they have. And I get out of the car, and a guy approached me. Now, usually, I'm used to, do you have some money for the trolley? I have had a lady come and say, uh, I just had a baby, we need diapers, we need formula. Okay, I'll go in and buy you diapers. I'm not going to give you money, I'll buy you diapers. So this guy, this is the first time I've had this. The guy approached me, and he looked like he just had a shower, but he's like, I just need a hairbrush. Well, I can go in a 99 cent store, Dollar Tree, and buy him a hairbrush. And I said, while we're here, is there something else you want or need? And he got a drink too. So I ministered to him in that way, okay? Now, if he had said, I need a brand new car, I would have said, I'm sorry, I can't do that for you. But I have given people rides, places, and I've helped change tires. I usually say, I'll help you change the tire because I hope somebody helps somebody else down the road. But see, there's a lot of ways that we can do good things, Peter tells us, one, we are part of something special. You're part of something special. I, does anybody belong to a, a club or a civic group like Kiwanis or um, to uh, Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts? or you belong to some, Maybe you just belong to a gym like Choose Fitness or Planet Fitness. Anybody belong to a club or a group or anything like that? Okay, there's one, two, three. Okay, there's a few of you that belong to something. As Christians, Peter tells us that we're part of something special. And you say, well, I know we're part of this church. And whether you're a member or a tender, you're part of this church. But we're part of something bigger than that. Did you know that? Let's read in what it says here in 1 Peter chapter 2. You are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his, God's, or Jesus' only special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who have not obtained mercy, but have now obtained mercy. We're a chosen people. 
We're a special group of people. Now, that doesn't mean that we get to look down on somebody else because of their skin color, their language, their size, their age, their lifestyle. That does, that's not what it's saying. It's saying that we are a called out assembly and there's something special about us together as believers. We're not the only church in the world, right? Some of you have been to other churches, okay? There are other churches that are doing the things that we're doing, large and smaller, okay? All of us collectively together, called as followers of Jesus Christ, are a special people, and Peter wants us to recognize that. Is there a secret handshake, Pastor Walt? No. Is there a certain thing that we have to wear? We have to go to a certain store and buy a certain type of underwear? No. Is there a, a thing? I see several guys here that have their heads shaved. We have to shave our heads. No. But if you've believed and trusted in Jesus Christ, if he's your Lord and Savior, you are a unique group of people. Amen? Amen. So that should make us a little different. It used to be if you came up on somebody and they said, I'm an Eagle Scout. Oh, that says something about you. Because you're resourceful and you've followed all those steps to get all those badges and all those things. And now you're doing your Eagle Scout thing, uh, your community service to receive that. And so that said something special. Or if somebody said, I'm an astronaut. That's somebody pretty special. They've been a special group, right? Well, we're a special group. Again, I want to emphasize this. That doesn't make us better than people around us. It's not set up for us to say, I'm better than you. Okay? That's not what it's set up for saying. Now let's look at a couple of other passages. We want to look at first, or 2 Corinthians pardon me, chapter 5, verses 17 through 21. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, anyone, he or she, is a new creation, old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. All right? Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Now that's a whole other message, and that's saying that we are told to tell people about Jesus Christ. Something good happened to me? I should be sharing it with others. Amen? amen? Okay, not allowed, amen. Okay. That is, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. We're supposed to tell others about Jesus Christ. Now then, we are, what? Ambassadors, Ambassadors for Christ. The president, with the help of the State Department, appoints ambassadors to countries around the world. If you remember a few years ago, there was a big deal made because we appointed the first ambassador from the United States to the Vatican. That was a big deal because we recognized them as an official body politic. All right? If you are an ambassador for the United States, no matter what country you're in, no matter what's going on there, you represent the United States. You live in, or you work in an embassy that has guards, that has flags, and that becomes a slice of the United States territory. What happens there fits the laws of the United States of America. We have people here that have fled to embassies in Washington, D.C., of other countries, and we can't touch them because they're on that country's sovereign territory. If we're an ambassador of Christ, that means we're supposed to represent Jesus Christ. And it's not an on-again, off-again thing. It's not a 24, uh, it's not a 40-hour-a-week job. It's a 24-7 job. We are called to be an ambassador of Christ all the time. And if you're busy cutting somebody down, or you're busy swearing at somebody, or... Uh, <laughs> I 
have a couple of Christian things on my car, my truck. The rear window, I have part of the church's logo, which is the three uh, crosses on a hill. And then I have a he is greater than I. Can you imagine what that stands for? He is greater than I. And then I have an international harvester, but that represents Jesus as the international harvester. I'm not a tractor guy, okay? I, therefore, need to be careful what I do and where my vehicle goes. So I don't think I ought to start yelling and screaming at somebody that maybe has made a mistake and come over on me accidentally or even on purpose. I am an ambassador. Well, maybe, Pastor, you should go out and get a razor knife and scrape those things off your car so you're not, right? People know I'm a pastor. People know I'm a Christian. If you were taken to court, would there be enough evidence to convict you of being a Christian? We're an ambassador of Jesus Christ. We're living for him. We're, we're a special group of people. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So Jesus died, and we're his ambassadors, and he gave his life for us. We ought to live differently. We're a special group of people. John writes this in the book of Revelation. Chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Now that was Turkey for us, Asia Minor. Grace to you and peace from him who is and was and who is to come. That's Jesus Christ. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over all the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We're kings and queens and priests in God's eyes. That's a special group. We have responsibilities. If you're any kind, let's say that you go over here and you want to join the San Diego County Country Golf, golf whatever it is, right over here on L Street. I don't have the faintest idea how much it costs a year to be a member there, much less to join it. But they have a big application that you have to fill out. If you don't have to be recommended, you have to fill out. So the public just can't go in there. You've got to be a member there, and there are certain rules and regulations about what you can and cannot do as a member there. We don't charge for you to be part of the church or part of the movement to follow Jesus Christ, but he does ask us to be willing to give ourselves a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. But God expects something of us because we are a special group of people. You are a special group of people if you're a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, I'm not trying to make you feel bad or feel left out. Because we want you to be part of it too, all right? Uh, we, are, don't, we won't give you a secret handshake or give you a certain code word to say when you come in the building out there, when Jerry and, and Randy are out there and you walk up and, okay, what's the code word for today? And they issue you a statement. No, we don't have that. It's just, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Amen? Amen. We are a chosen people because we believe in Jesus Christ and you are part of that. Peter also tells us that we need to be changed for the better. We need to be changed for a better. Every nursery, a nursery of churches across the United States should have the verse that says, for we, we shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed. It's referring to something else, but yeah, do babies need to be changed? It's, 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 it's interesting, as Ezra is getting a little older, his 
uh, little things that you can see that are a trigger that he's done something in his diaper and he needs to be taken care of. Okay? I can't wait for him to say, uh, hello, I need you to go and change my diaper because I'm tired of what's back here. Okay? But we need to change him regularly. Right? We don't leave him in that for hours and hours and hours and hours on end. We change. All of us go through change. We need to be changed for the better. We should be striving for better, for quality, for, okay? So what does that look like? Peter says in, second, in 1 Peter chapter 2, I beg you, uh, beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims. Huh. We are ambassadors, we're special people, but we're only going to be here until he returns. Okay? So we're in the world, but not of the world. We live differently. Okay? I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. Abstain from sin. That's easy, right? Well, not necessarily easy, but that's easy to understand. Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles. Now, uh, that word Gentiles spoke of anybody that was not Jewish. But we can change it in today's language and say, having your conduct honorable among everybody in the world. So that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation. Let me make a statement here. We shouldn't be known for what we are saying is wrong all the time. And uh, we shouldn't be known as, uh, well, I don't like Christians because they're always saying mean and ugly things. We should be known because we show the love of God to people and we are helping people and we're stepping up and doing good things. So we should be known for doing good things over, well, uh, they're always saying that you can't and you shouldn't and don't. Instead, what can we do to help? I'm going to use this example. I don't want to offend anybody. But if we're going to say as Christians that we're against abortion, then we need to help with the problem. How do we help? Well, if the young lady and the father decide to keep the baby, should we help them by supporting them? Because some say, I can't afford a child. I've got to get an abortion. By diapers, formula, clothing, a, a crib, etc. Should we be doing that? Yes. Absolutely. Is that a good thing to do? So we might say, don't do an abortion. Or how about, can we help prepare you for if you want to set your child up for adoption. And oh, by the way, we're willing to adopt your child if that's what you need to do. You see, so we've taken something that the world might say, well, you Christians are against this. You're always saying don't and stop and you shouldn't. But instead we say, well, let's go this other way and we're going to offer some alternatives and we're going to do these things to help you. That could be done in a lot of different areas, Right? Set free says you shouldn't do drugs. You shouldn't do stuff that's going to destroy your body and lead you in the wrong direction with addictions. And they provide everybody with things to help them get around that. We're going to do Bible studies and we're going to live a better lifestyle. We're going to do this and that. And if you spend any time with the set free brothers and sisters that come here on Wednesday night, man, God has worked in their lives. Their testimonies are spectacular. Francisco's testimony is just mind-blowing what he went through before he came to God. So we should be offering and saying, instead of don't stop, but how about this? How about this? What can I do to come alongside you and pray for you and help you? We should be doing something a little different. As they look at us, they will give glory to God. Isn't that what it's all about anyways? It's not for my glory. It's not for the church's glory. It's to glorify God. Um, we have now in the, in, the, uh, in the library and in another room, we have over 140 backpacks. They were given to us from the North American Mission Board. And 
the two churches or three churches together can make a decision. We may have over 200 backpacks. Do we want to give them to homeless? Do we want to give them to school children that may not have school supplies? And so uh, I'm going to put a, a, a charge to you and say, can you take a backpack and here's a list of what you need to put in it and fill it up and then bring it back so we can either give it to a student or give it to a homeless person or whatever we decide, whichever way we decide to go to do something good in the name of Jesus Christ, okay? Something that we can do so that can somebody say, well, let's give glory to God because... It didn't cost us anything for these backpacks. We want them to glorify God. Romans says this, Romans 13. Do this knowing the time, that now it's high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Jesus is coming soon. The night is far spent, the day is at hand, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness, let us put on the armor of light, let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, I don't want that name, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. What are churches known for? Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. God wants us to change. That's a basic tenet of Christianity. It's not just get saved and keep living like you were. It's trust in Jesus, believe in Jesus, get saved, and then your life is going to change. It may take a while, but your life needs to change. We see this in Ephesians chapter 5. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness righteousness and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Oh, they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Eh. It's not supposed to be, oh, they'll know we are Christians by our hate, by our hate. That's not what the song is. We are supposed to be walking as children of light. What's the first word a child normally learns besides mama and dada? What is it? No. Why? Because we're not praising them for what they're doing right. We're telling them, don't touch that. Don't touch this. Darcy was holding Ezra the other day and he was trying to touch something with his hand and she said, don't touch that. So he laid back in her arms and put his foot up and touched it. It wasn't his hands. It was his foot. Okay? Ah. But no is something we get used to hearing, but that shouldn't be what we're talking about as Christians all the time. We should be saying, do you know Jesus? Do you have eternal life? Are you reconciled with God? God has the answer for your problems, whatever they are. Again, not making out like we're better than somebody else. I'm a Christian, look at me. I used to joke around in Bible college. Have you ever seen a family Bible? It's supposed to be on the coffee table in the living room, and it's about yay big. Okay? We used to joke around and say, you see people walking around with a giant Bible in their arms like, look at me, I'm holy and righteous, and, and I'm so much better than everybody else. That's not how we're supposed to be walking around. For the grace of God, we'd be in the same spot. Amen? Amen? But because God's grace and because of salvation, our life has changed. But we should say, come on, brother. Come on, sister. Let's go. I'll help you. I'll help you. So we're supposed to have a change. And uh, Peter tells us we can know exactly what God wants us to do. It's not a head scratcher. It's not a, I can't figure this out. God will tell us exactly what he wants us to do. And when he wants us to do it. And where he wants us to do it. God will work to tell you. Go back to 1 Peter chapter 2. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether they be king as supreme or to governors 
as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bondservants of God. Honor, wait, 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 did you, did you hear that? Honor all people. That means show them respect. Love the brotherhood. Love the Christians, one another. Fear God, have respect for God, and honor the king. That's whoever is in charge. Now, you say, well, Pastor Walt, I don't agree with all of the current president's uh, decisions and policies. There might be somebody else here that didn't agree with the previous president's policies and actions. Okay? And we'll probably have a broad mix of people here, but... This is what God has called us to do. Um, instead of shooting our current president down, Joe Biden, have you thought about praying for him? I see stuff all the time. Joe Biden's a jerk, and Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden. Have you thought about praying for him? Have you thought about praying for him and asking God to give him wisdom to make the right decisions? How about our good governor here, Governor Newsom? Have you prayed for him? It says in Romans that we ought to be under their authority. It says here that we ought to be under their authority. It says uh, in another place, pray for those that rule over you. You say, well, does that mean in everything we're supposed to obey them? What if they tell us to stop talking about Jesus as long as it doesn't go against the word of God? We ought to obey God rather than men. It comes down to that. So if they come in here and say, you can't preach the entire word of God, I'm going to say, sorry, I'm going to preach the entire word of God. Because that's what God's told me to do. But we are supposed to submit to them. Did you see that part? Listen, we'll go back to this. That by doing the will of God, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. So if you're doing the right thing, wait a minute, you're a Christian and you're doing the right thing. Because we've had a lot of, of news stories and stories out there on the internet about Christians that are not doing the right thing. And it's always a big, you know, look at this pastor. He did this. But for every one guy like that, there's thousands of pastors that are continuing to do the right thing. There is a Dodger baseball guy, pitcher. Initially, I was watching his videos on YouTube, but then he had a sex charge against him. And some of you might remember Trevor Bauer. And the, they decided not to pursue the criminal investigation any further. They said there was nothing to it. But they have sus the Major League Baseball has suspended him for two years. Okay? He's still trying to do baseball. But you see, he's got a mark against his name. Now, I said just a second ago, just because you see one pastor that's doing something wrong doesn't mean all pastors are. Do you think all baseball players, because of Trevor Bauer, do you think all baseball players are bad and are doing terrible and wicked things? There's a lot of them that are believers that are players. For the Padres, for the Dodgers, for, the, for almost every ball club, there's Christians there. So don't just say, well, one, well, no, we need to be doing the right thing. It's too bad, but the news isn't interested in lifting Christianity up. The news is interested in stories that sell. Okay? Let's go on to Romans. Romans 13, 7 through 10. Render, therefore, to all their due. Taxes to whom taxes are due. Customs to whom customs. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. Jesus said, render to Caesar what's Caesar's and to God what's God's, right? Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law for the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. If there's any other commandment are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. So if love does no harm to a neighbor, what does love do to a neighbor? Good. Right? But you don't understand. They had a party at their house last night, and they were up late. 
the music was going and it was loud and I couldn't enjoy it at all because it's not my style of music. And I, when I see him, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull my car up in the driveway and race the engine and turn my music on real loud and honk the horn a lot of times. Is that what you're supposed to do? But you don't understand, Pastor. I had to get up early and go to work. You don't understand. We're to be harmless because of love. Paul says this in Philippians, Therefore, my beloved, as you as always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Put your salvation to work. What has it done? Has it changed your life? And are you helping others? For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. You ever been somewhere where it's so dark that just a lighter or a dim flashlight coming on meant all the difference? I've been in a cave where the guide says, you think it's light in here? Everybody turn off their flashlights. And it was, you can't even see your hand in front of your face. Dark. But a little candle light makes a big difference in that darkness. So as the world seems like it's continually getting worse, we're not supposed to just sort of lockstep with them. We're supposed to stand up. We're the salt of the earth. We're the city on a hill. We're the light of the world through Jesus Christ. And we're supposed to be showing others that that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run or in vain or labored in vain. What are you doing? You're called to ministry if you're a believer in Jesus Christ. Again, if you are not a believer in Jesus Christ, He wants you to come to Him, and it's the easiest thing in the world. You don't have to drive a Ford or a Chevy. You don't have to shave your head. You just admit that you're a sinner, believe that Jesus died for your sins, and confess his name. Simple. And if you want to talk about it, I'd be happy to talk with you about it at the end of the service today. If you want to come to Jesus Christ. But if you are here today and you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you are called to be different. You are called to minister. And you need to be praying and asking him, what is it that you want me to do? What can I do for good works? It doesn't have to be here at church. It could be at home. It could be at school. It could be at work. It could just be out in a community. Some of you have heard this before. I want to use this illustration. I was standing in a line at the grocery store and I had a few items I was getting and there was a guy in front of me and it was around Easter and he was trying to buy some plastic Easter eggs. And it looked like he was trying to have like a little party for his family. And so he ran, he went through the register and the lady said, this is how much and he put his card in and she said, you don't have enough. So he started removing things that I could see would be necessary for the Easter party. He began pushing, do I have enough? Do I have enough? And finally she said, yeah, you've gotten it down to what you have on your card. And he swiped his card. And I said, you're going to ring those up on my account. Sir, you can take those things because you need them. I said, just ring them up on mine and I'll pay for them. And that's what she did. I don't know his name. I've never, I don't know that I've ever seen him again. But you see, I was trying to do something good. And, and I don't care if I get accolades. Oh, thank you. That was awesome. Thanks, Pastor. You did a great job. Just a simple word of thanks. Sometimes I do things and people say, Oh, that's great. What can I do? And I go, just pass it on. Do it to somebody else. Pass it on. Help somebody else. But we need to do things. That's what we're called to do. That's what God wants us to do. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the time together we've had today. For this whole series, Created with Purpose. Lord, each one of us has something that you want us to do. 
something that you want us to accomplish. We all have value. We all are your children. We all are created in your image for good things. Help us, Lord, as believers to do the right thing, to live and to look for those things that we can help others and we can be a minister of Jesus Christ. It doesn't have to be in the church, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be outside of the church doors to do those things in ministry. Lord, if there's, me, if there's anyone here that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, I pray that you'll open up their hearts to their need for Jesus Christ in their life. Be with us, we pray, in the next few weeks. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. All right. So just a couple of brief announcements. Um, I am not going to be here next Sunday. All right? So Ivan, if you'll stand up, Ivan. Ivan is here. And Ivan is... How many of you know Jonathan Herrera? He's come and sang for us and preached for us in the past. This, uh, he's your uncle, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So Ivan is the nephew, and so he'll be here next Sunday to sing for us and to preach, and I appreciate that very much. So um, you say, well, I come to hear Pastor Walt. Hopefully you're not coming to hear me. You're coming to hear Jesus Christ, about Jesus Christ. Okay? So please be here. If you get a chance, meet him. Have a minute to say thanks for coming by today, okay? Um, secondly, Vacation Bible School is coming up quickly. We may be making a push with the backpacks to not take a VBS offering, but to uh, build out those backpacks at VBS as well, both churches or all three churches, so we can then hand them out in August. So we'll let you know more about that if we're going to go homeless or uh, to the school kids, whether you need school supplies or things for homeless, we'll make a list up so you can know what to give, what to get. Um, we may be doing some other things, but if you would like to help with VBS, please make sure you talk to uh, Katie or Darcy or myself and say, I want to help in some way with Vacation Bible School. Second thing is, coming up, is the yard sale. And that's actually sooner than VBS. That's the last Saturday of the month from 7 to noon. Anything that's brought in that week will be sold for missions work in Tijuana specifically at Iglesia uh, Centro Shalom. So the bus has to be emptied. Set Free is going to empty it for us so we can go through it, and we need to do that. If you want to bring something to be sold, I, I know a pastor that has a pickup truck that might be willing, but you've got to help him load it and unload it, okay? Don't say, come to my house, pastor, and we'll load it up, and then you, bye, let's see you later. I need your help unloading it. But we would prefer you not to bring anything to be sold at that until the week of. Okay? So please don't say, hey, pastor, I'll see you tomorrow morning. You won't believe what I got that you, we need to sell because I don't have any place to put it. We're going to have to drag it out of the bus as it is. Okay? So um, that is, and we need people to help work at it too. All right? I can promise you lunch if you come and help us with the yard sale. We start at seven, but I can guarantee as we're setting up at that time, there will be people here going through stuff because they like to do that. So that's coming up. And again, as I mentioned, the backpack thing will be coming up soon. Um, my wife and I will be out of town next Sunday and next Wednesday night. If you normally come on Wednesday night, not this week, next week, um, then you will be in with Set Free. I'm going to talk to Pastor Francisco, make sure you'll be here, and you'll be in their service for Bible study. That's a week from Wednesday night. All right, let's stand and... We've been trying to sing this song for about a month and a half, Victory in Jesus. So let's stand and sing Victory in Jesus.